create additional solving problem applying the set theorem. Let us have example number two. It says here, evaluate the integral of f dot dr along the curve c, where c is given below along y equals x squared over 2 and y equals x, transverse counterclockwise, and the given vector field f is equal to y squared x squared. First thing to do is to write the formula of evaluating the integral of f dot dr. So we write this as, we have the integral of f dot dr along the curve c is equal to the integral of f dx plus g dy along the curve c is equal to the double integral of the quantity partial derivative of the function g with respect to x minus we have the partial derivative of the function f with respect to y times differential a along the region r. Then let us find our function g. So function g and function f can be found from your vector field given as y squared x squared. So your first component here, y squared will be your f. So we let f equal to y squared. And when we get the partial derivative of the function f with respect to y, this is equal to, to y. Then we have the other component to be as our g. So let g be equal to x squared. Then let us get the partial derivative of your function g with respect to x. So the derivative of this function x squared with respect to x is 2x. So after having known already our partial derivatives, let us get the limits or let us find the limits for your region. So we have here the given curve, y equals x squared over two and y equals x. So let us sketch these two. So the first one is y equals x squared over two. So this is a parabola which opens upward. and the vertex is at zero, zero. Then the other given equation or given curve is has the equation y equals x. So this is a line passing through the origin and it is leaning to the right. So if we're going to draw now the region, so this is your line whose equation is y equals x. You can also use point plotting to graph y equals x. So to check if our answer is correct, so you can just assign value to x and solve for y. So let's see if x is zero, what is y? Zero. If x equals one, what is y? One. So therefore this is your zero, zero, then this could be your one, one. So just connect these two points and extend it indefinitely. While the parabola which opens upward will look like this. So where's now the region? This is the region bounded by the two curves. And the stripping that we're going to use, we can use again, Vertical, vertical rather, or horizontal. So let us just use instead vertical. And the differential A can be found 
by having this vertical strip. So we have it as the differential A cannot be equal to dy dx. So let me draw a vertical strip. So with that, let us now define our end setup rather the integral. So the partial g with respect to x is 2x and the partial f with respect to y is 2y. Then the differential a is dy dx. Again, defining now the limits for dy, it will be y up. Let us just use as y sub u and y down y sub t. For dx, it is the lower limit here is xl or abscissa left, then the upper limit is xr or abscissa right. So let us now define the limits. So copy the function to be integrated in terms of dy dx. For y up, y up would be, we have here the line y equals x. So this is y equals x. Then for y down, it is the curve of your parabola. This is your y equals x squared over 2. And for the dy, or rather the dx, it is abscissa right and abscissa left. So we will locate those, those points or limits by the bounded or boundary points of your given region. So we have this as 0, 0. Then what will be this point here? So if I'm going to assign here the value of your x equals 1, what will be your y? y will be 1 half. Or we can also verify by using point or using these two equations, y equals x squared over two and y equals x. So we let's combine them because both are y in terms of x. So x equals x squared over two. So that we can now have this as zero equities to zero. Then we have here x squared over two minus x and that if we're going to set or factor out x this would be x over 2 minus 1. So with that set each factor to 0 this is your 0 so we have x equals 0 and then the other one x over 2 equals 1 so therefore x equals 2. So that will be the easiest way to determine the point that we have here. So when we have x equals 2, that's 2 squared, so that's 4 over 2. That will be the value for y is Again, so this point will contain, you have it as 2, 2. So checking it again, when x equals 2, that's 2 squared, that's 4 over 2 is 2. Now defining now the limits for your variable of integration, dx, that will be 0, 2, 2. So let us now integrate this given function. So performing the innermost part first. So the integral of 2x dy having 2x as a constant. So the integral of dy is y. So we write this as 2xy. While here, the integral of negative 2y dy is negative 2y squared over 2. Or simply, this is just y squared. Then applying the upper limit, x and x squared over 2. So that we have here now, 
you have this as 2x times the upper limit is x, while here we have it as quantity x squared or simply x squared. That's your upper limit. Then minus, you have this as 2x times, you have it as 4y, that is x squared over 2. Minus, we have this now as substitute. You have this as x squared over 2 squared. So let us further evaluate. So we have here now as 2x times x is x squared. 2x squared rather minus x squared is simply x squared. Then we have here, this will cancel, that will be x times x squared is x cubed. So times negative, that's minus x cubed. Then we have here, this is now x to the fourth over four. That's negative times negative positive. It's 16 hours. Then this will now be, you have to integrate now. So this is x cubed over three minus x to the fourth over four plus x to the fifth over five times four is 20 from zero to two. So applying the limits now, we have here the upper limit first, that's two cubed over three is eight over three. Then we have minus two to the fourth is 16 over four is four. Then we have here two to the fifth is 32 over 20. Then we have the lower limit applying on your terms here that will be zero. So I'll just have this as my answer. So we get now the LCD, which is 20. And three, so because we have three times 20, 60. Then obtain now the numerator part. We have this now as, so obtaining now the numerator, we have this as 60 divided by three is 20 times eight is 160. And then we have here 60 divided by one is 60 times negative four is negative 240. Then 60 divided by 20 is three times 32 that is 96. So when you simplify now the numerator, you have the answer is 16 over 60, or this can be simplified as four over 15. So this is the answer for this given problem number two. This is how we evaluate the given integral using Green's theorem.